By combining counters with a pretty standard RSNOR sequence latch, I've created a simple three button lock that has the potential for unlimited permutations. So with these three buttons, there are unlimited possibilities to open this door. At least there would be if you didn't know the wiring. For this example, it takes nine presses of these three buttons to get in. For the first button, you have to press us three times. The second button has to be pressed twice. And the fourth button has to be pressed four times. And it should also be noted that these have to be pressed in the correct order, or else the door will not open. And here we have the master reset. And the lock also has measures to prevent people from just button mashing until the door opens. See back here you can see the RSNR latches which build together into the sequence lock. And this one corresponds to the first button. With, and this side is active, it means that that button is not correct, or that part of the lock has not been released. When this side activates, you'll know it has been, which I'll go and show you what happens when that's the case. Okay, there's the three button pushes. And you may have noticed this piston extends. That's because if you press it a fourth time, now this wall block will carry the current and it'll reset the entire lock. Which here you can see that part has been activated now. Which pressing it a fourth time will not only reset the counter, it will reset the RSNR latch in the back too. As you can see that's been reset as well. And like I said before, pressing them in the wrong order will do nothing. There's a second button activated without the first one being activated. And as you can see that latch is still not on. So at this point you'd either need to reset the whole button, or just press the reset button, or press the middle button once more to reset it, and then activate the first one and push it two more times. Now this looks kind of complicated, but it's actually rather simple. A lot of the stuff that's just kind of messy is the reset wiring, which I just kind of cobbled together in any way that would fit. But for the actual counter mechanism, I can show you how to build that quickly. First you just need the wiring going up here, and this is going to be the one that activates. Now on all of the single red squares, <coughs> you would place one piston. And I made the simple template if you want to download the world and build it along with me, just to see or just to get an idea of how to do it yourself. On the three red squares in a row, you would build an AND gate. And then on the pink, you would place redstone with a repeater in the gap. And from there on, it just repeats. which between, or for this to be activated, the redstone has to go into all the AND gates and the very first piston, which I'll just place a repeater between them just to make sure that everything stays the same. And for the first piston, it requires a delay of eight ticks. All of them going into the AND gates can just stay at one. And for these repeaters, it needs to be at the maximum four ticks. And let's just see how that worked. Oop. 
and that's why I go through and test it. I forgot one key detail. It requires a repeater after the torch. Okay, let's try that again. So now you can see the first one's deactivated. Second one is. Third one is. And then you have to press it one more time to get the output to activate. Now to reset it, it is pretty simple. I just place a repeater before each piston just to ensure that the current actually goes to it. There's some quirky glitches with pistons and redstone. But just to show the, deac or the reset, it's as simple as that. Now for mine to get the automatic resets, I had to work in some RS NOR latches to alternate how the current flows. Which, if you just mess around and play around with it, it's not too complicated. And I'll have the world download up if you want to just rip it apart and see how I did it. But, good luck.